Hello, what's up guys? Today we're painting pink anemone with some other flowers and leaves. Um, I saw that you really liked the video with peony, so I decided to uh, create another video uh, with the flower, uh, with flowers. <laughs> um, so this is gonna be a quick tutorial where I show you how to create a composition. Um, you need to remember about the negative space. So here I'm sketching right now, um, just kind of jotting down the objects, I mean the flowers in my case, um, that I'm going to paint. I'm not going into the details of how I'm going to paint those. I'm just, I just want to see um, how they're going to look on the paper. Uh, so I just quickly sketch and just briefly draw the shapes. And you see, I, I don't like how they look, so I just keep moving around. And uh, when you create your composition, it doesn't matter whatever you paint, um, make sure that your final result um, looks good and you have enough negative space uh, that creates that balance um, to the composition. Um, and ideally, if you are trying to um, sketch something and um, you're brand new to you know painting or sketching, try to use a regular paper um, instead of um, a watercolor paper because the more you um, erase the pencil from the watercolor paper, um, the, the higher the chance that you can damage it. Uh, so just keep that in mind that uh, it's better just to use just a regular white paper or, or sketch paper and um, sketch your composition first. Um, and then once you're happy with the final result, you can transfer it to the watercolor paper. So now um, as I'm happy with the layout, uh, so right now I'm drawing the details um, of the anemia and the other plants that I have um, uh, on my reference. Um, by the way, the reference is uh, below the video and there is a link. And uh, I also um, took a, a picture of the um, sketch, of the final sketch uh, that I made uh, for you guys to use. Um, if you're a little bit scared to draw, uh, you know, I know sometimes people are intimidated <laughs> by drawing flowers. They think it's super complicated because they have so many, you know, shapes and layers. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is a little bit intimidating, but if you practice, um, as I always say in my videos, if you practice, um, you're gonna be good. Uh, and uh, over time, uh, you will sketch uh, flowers and you will paint flowers without any issues. So um, yeah, I mentioned that I took a picture of the final sketch. So if you're uh, a little bit scared of drawing, um, you can simply download it, print it out and uh, watch the video. Um, when I start using the watercolor so you can color after me and then if you are brave enough <laughs> you can just um, take your regular piece of paper uh, sketch it uh, kind of you know practice um, your still life and um, and then you can use the watercolor paper and copy everything that you already practiced um, it takes some time especially you know for total beginners um, to be satisfied with the final result but you know this is art and uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and whatever you are sketching painting or whatever um, it could just look like the way you see it, you know? Uh, if you go to any art gallery, you will see some weird paintings and you'll be like, whoa, this is the in the museum. <laughs> like, I can do that, right? So <laughs> just don't feel intimidated if you cannot draw or paint something that is gonna look like realistic. Um, that's totally fine. Just no pressure at all. Um, and again, if this is your goal to paint realistically, to draw realistically, guess what? Practice, right? <laughs> so yeah, so just practice and um, you're gonna be good. Here I used um, the paintable eraser uh, to kind of, you know, remove the tone of the pencil uh, because, you know, watercolor is nearly transparent and um, I prefer when you don't see a pencil, uh, but if, if it is your idea to, you know, have the pencil visible, that's totally fine. You don't have to do that or you can just use a simple eraser and um, uh, erase the extra lines that you don't need for your composition. Here I mixed um, green deep, I mean, I didn't mix them, I just created uh, three little puddles um, of green deep, sap green, and green yellow um, to create, the, uh, to, to paint the stem um, of, the, of the flower. Uh, why I did that is because, you know, the, uh, the 
the stamp is not just the green color. Um, if you look at the reference, um, you will see that it has many shades. That's the reason why I decided to combine all of them. I mean, it, it depends. You can just um, use, for example, green, yellow, or like lighter green, like super diluted green, and just uh, keep adding colors. But what I did here um, is I combined all three colors, so they kind of communicated uh, with each other and you can see that little um, transition uh, that the watercolor is created uh, while being wet um, when your watercolor like the first layer the base layer uh, is dried you are not able to create this watercolor really gonna wash um, look <laughs> of, of, of the paints because you know it's already dry so that's the reason why if you want to create um, if you want to go super artistic then you just can um, make the whole stem or like whatever you're painting wet and just throw the blobs of different colors um, th that you want to use and uh, you will see them communicate they will kind of blend naturally um, and create a very cool um, shade all right so for this guy i'm using red violet and um, burnt umber um, it's a little bit kind of purplish brown um, if you look on um, on the, at the reference uh, so that's the reason why i'm, I'm uh, painting the stem with uh, this combination um, and I also added a little bit of green uh, because you know when I when I look at the reference I it feels like there is some green shade on the stem uh, you might not see it <laughs> you might not want to add it as like it's not required but I just want to go um, very you know kind of artistic and add some stuff um, as for the branches um, I just used um, a little bit of uh, rose color uh, because this, the branches um, from where the, the flowers uh, grow they're a little bit lighter compared to the stem. Uh, for this green leaf um, I mixed all the three puddles together and I added a little bit of um, raw sienna to it um, uh, to paint the stem um, and uh, right now the most exciting part is painting <laughs> the petals of anemone. Um, I just used the rose and a little bit of carmen um, uh, if you look closely to the reference, um, you will notice that um, some of the petals, like the, some parts of the petals, uh, they look a little bit more purplish. Uh, some of them look more a little bit over like a reddish. Uh, somewhere is even like purplish red uh, or even yellow shades. Um, so what I what I'm doing right now is I just add in a little bit of um, red violet, uh, diluting it, uh, and I add at the same time like in the same puddle I let the, the colors communicate and I add um, um, Carmen um, and uh, wash uh, the, the, like the whole th uh, area that I painted with a little bit of water uh, to kind of blend them um, and um, uh, as I like to do I go with the base layer um, which is nearly transparent uh, so this allows me to add more colors and the uh, player more with tones um, that's the reason why I just uh, I don't like to paint like with the super saturated colors uh, from the beginning because you know I might uh, just look at the reference even longer because like the more you stare of uh, at the object that you are trying to paint uh, the more you see uh, different colors different transitions and uh, that's the reason why I prefer to start very late um, and uh, then uh, when I can progress with my painting, um, I, I like to add a little bit more saturated colors and already, you know, uh, play with shades and tones uh, to create that, you know, natural looking look, natural looking look. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the more you like you look at the at the object that you're painting uh the more you see uh, cool things uh, about that object um and as you can see on my painting uh when i paint petals i'm leaving some um, negative space between them um is it is for that simple reason is it because you know first i'm gonna play with co colors a little bit later and uh, second because i want to add um how do you call them? Uh, shades. <laughs> my favorite. My favorite part of uh, the whole painting is always shades. Um, so yeah, I just left them for the shades. Um, as for those uh, little like um, flower petals, uh, I used also rose, um, very diluted rose uh, because they are nearly like baby pink um, kind of color. Um, so that's the reason why um, I painted them like super light.
So for this stigma, I think it's called stigma in the middle of the flower, um, on the reference it looks black, um, but I used burnt umber and um, purple red to make it a little bit darker looking. Um, I don't like to use black on my paintings, like if it's not necessary. Um, I prefer to mix the few colors and to get that darker shade um, to give the painting more like artistic look. Uh, just this is the simple reason. <laughs> um, so under the flower I'm painting, um, again, uh, mixing and matching um, green deep, yellow green, sap green, um, even somewhere I use burnt umber um, uh, in the areas like right up under the petals. Um, and I'm painting this, uh, the, the most left um, like leaves, I honestly I'm not sure what kind of plant is this. Um, and I just keep adding um, more tone to leaves. Um, if you look at the reference, you will see that some leaves are darker so that's the reason why i paint them darker um, and you can also notice that um, there is one leaf like a two leaves um, half of that leaf is darker and the, like the other uh, like a quarter of it is a little bit uh, lighter um, which is cool uh, again it uh, also a le learnable skill by simple observation so if you are struggling like oh my god how do i paint leaves like i don't know how to make them you know look so natural and so nice you just look at the at the reference look at like, like if you have an actual plant if you have a light source that comes uh, like that sh shines on that object you just look at it and see you know one area will be uh, naturally darker or lighter uh, uh, because of that light uh, because of the um, you know room that you are in or like if you're outside the sun would sh will shine on one part and then the other part of the leaf will be darker because of the shades that you know come from that light so you know it just you you need to look at uh, the thing again uh, i will repeat <laughs> that you want to paint and then you just study it you just look at anything that is uh, fascinating or like you you want to paint leaves yeah you just look at them and you see there are many shades many colors you see i'm just using three colors in here um but by looking at the reference i see where the light um goes on those leaves and um it's the same plant but because of the light um i you know all the shades and tones they come out differently so now i'm adding more saturated colors um again purple red um somewhere red violet and carmine um to the petals um of the flower um and again i'm, I'm just mm, looking at the reference and mixing and matching um the, those colors to add more uh, pigment uh, that creates that transition as you can see um close to stigma i will call it stigma i'm not sure if, I, if i'm correct or well, the middle of the flower um uh, the petals a little bit lighter uh, so i'm kind of washing off that paint um and um let the area that is um, further from the uh, middle of the plant be a little bit darker um, and um, yeah I just in the middle like uh, between that kind of uh, bulb or like uh, yeah let's call it bulb <laughs> in the rain um, that I painted uh, like uh, the, the stigma with um, I added a little bit of yellow because um, it looks to me it looks a little bit yellowish um, and a little bit later I'm gonna add um, a few um, uh, pinkish strokes to it uh, to make it look uh, like a like a bicycle wheel if you will <laughs> So I'm done with petals and right now I'm using green deep and sap green and green yellow um, to add more shades um, and definition to the stem of the um, uh, flower. Um, if you add a little bit more like a darker uh, pigment, uh, darker color um, on one side, like again depending on the light on one side of the plant, uh, then you will be able to create uh, that look that will visually look pop um, and uh, give the feeling that you know the plant is actually there and it's like y you want to touch it you know when you look at it <laughs> 
I also added more saturated pigment um, to the area under the flower uh, to make it more to make it stand out more. Um, and right now, as you see, I mixed um, uh, sap green and green yellow and burnt umber um, to add some uh, shades under the flower. Um, and um, I'm also adding a little bit of shades to that little pink plant that I also don't know what you know how, how it is called um so yeah it's just uh, basically de the details um that i'm working on right now um i'm uh, checking on the on the reference um, and seeing where i can add some stuff um i'm, I'm gonna mix uh, right now i'm mixing red light um to make those um, little flowers um, a little bit uh, kind of to create a little bit of volume for them um, and to make them stand out because uh, my base layer was very transparent um, and um, yeah so I'm gonna play with the some leaves uh, a little bit more right now and basically um, you don't want to overwork your work um, I know in some of my previous videos I said that I, I love adding more <laughs> and more layers um, but you know it depends on the thing that you're painting and it depends um, what you want to achieve from the um, uh, total like the whole art, art, artwork um, I felt like I want to keep this uh, particular painting um, like light I didn't want to add too many colors because uh, it looks good already to me <laughs> so um that's the reason why i'm just um uh doing some touch-ups um and uh, completing the painting here comes the shade so yeah uh for the shade um i used the um, uh, purple um uh, purple blue a little bit of purple blue um in the red violet um and the pigment as you see uh, is very saturated um when i painted the, the shades i realized that um, it was a little bit too dark uh so that's the reason why i just um, you know wetted my brush um, dried it on the, um, my cloth that i'm using um, and made them a little bit lighter um so right now i I, I was happy with the with the result and um, yeah the, the initial layer was a little bit too dark um, and because the I painted the shades um, a little bit darker than I, I planned um, I just um, add uh, right now I'm adding a little bit more um, colors a little bit more saturated pigment um, to the petals of the flower um, to uh, kind of counter weigh um, the shades because otherwise the petal were too pale and the shades were like too too bright um, that's the reason why I, I decided to add a little bit more uh, so then you know the whole thing looks good And the final touch um, is the shade for the plants. Um, I just use neutral tint, um, but um, if you don't have neutral tint, it's basically just gray. Um, you can use uh, two complementary colors. Um, uh, they, they're gonna be uh, in the almost in equal amounts. Um, you could mix red, um, green, uh, maybe dab a little bit of uh, purple or blue, and then you will you would get um, a brown like a, a brown hue, um, uh, and then you can also paint the shade. It depends on your preferences. Again, I just like to use um, uh, neutral tint um, for like super light shades. And if you want to have a gray hue, like gray color, and you don't have it, uh, you can simply mix red, yellow, and blue. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, you will get that gray um, color uh, that you can use for the shades um, under the objects. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new please click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos that are gonna come this week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time